Power Girl issue number two. That's right, folks. What are we doing here? It's kind of interesting. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, kind of cool. I am very interested in the fact that we do have a Power Girl book that is supposedly ongoing. That's very exciting. And then the story comes, and I'm like, hey, this is this is a choice that we're doing. It's kind of a lot, and I, I don't know if like the specifics of what we're doing is going to help like new or old readers want to stick around with Power Girl. If you're an old reader, it's kind of like an upset of everything we've done with her. We're changing her name, the origins the same, but everything else, it's different. And if you're a new reader, you're kind of like, is this the character or is this just like a very specific interpretation of somebody who's gone through multiple different names? There's a lot. And I don't think this book is bad by any means. It's decent. It's very solid. I, I don't know if there's anything that's, you know, grabbing me to the point where I'm like, oh, yes, I am so pumped to read this every week. It is really good, fair, and it's just, it's cool that we're doing this for her. Because we could have easily just, like, not have done it. So it is kind of exciting that, you know, Power Girl has a book. It's cool enough. And some of the ideas are fine. I haven't loved any of them yet, but we open up this issue. We're dealing with the ramifications of the last one. We are following Amalak, and he's in his space vessel, and he, he just secured some of, like, the artifacts and technologies that were at, like, the you know, museum, the, like, the piece that they were selling everything at in the last issue. He's observing, like, that weird, glowing, oozy, kind of, like, symbiotic thing that looks Kryptonian origin, but something about it seems very different. And then the, like, weird thing enters him? <laughs> like, it goes through his mouth, I think, and takes over his body kind of symbiote style kind of like venom that's the that's what i'm kind of getting from this like a weird parasitic creature that enters you like it's like you know alive and it like takes over his body and it starts using like the plural for like i and we so the you know the the, the way we're talking is a little bit different and i don't know i'm like okay that's kind of cool like this is a new character we can play with he's a spacefaring guy and he just got taken over by a parasite what's that gonna look like kind of cool i guess it's fun then we cut to the Daily Planet, and we see that the new name for Power Girl, Paige Stetler, is working at the Daily Planet. And did we say that last issue? I know she was doing something in curation with the Daily Planet, but she was like a tech entrepreneur. Like, that was her, like, alias. So I thought it'd be more, like, tech-focused. She's like a columnist who, who like, writes tech-related articles for the Daily Planet, but... It just kind of feels like if we're trying something new with this character, putting her in the Daily Planet traps her in the Kara and Clark zone. I think there's like famous iterations of both Kara and Clark that work for a newspaper. And if we want to like separate her from that lineage, maybe put her somewhere else. I don't know. She's got her own intern, Mariposa, and she's like, I got you like the name of that CIA guy you ran into, like Axel Gust. If you want to, like, call him, you know, might be kind of nice. Also, the big boss wants to see her, so Paige heads to Lois's office. Yay! Lois, she's still the, the chief. It's great. The editor-in-chief, the coolest lady in the world. And it's just like, hey, so I know we're at work, but I'm going to ask you about, like, the Superman stuff, and we're going to play it up that you're on, like, a super and secret assignment, like some investigation. So you're going to have to like start packing because you're headed away. But of course you have to finish the column that you have to write that's due this morning. So she's got to do that. It's kind of cool. Like this is a really good use of Lois. She is competent in the job. She knows exactly what's expected of Paige. It's like, okay, you have to go do this. Please get the other job done. And everything's going to be fine. Pretty cool. The artwork is very fun. I do like it. I think Lois and Paige both look really good in this book. It's really fun. We get a couple of sequences of just watching Power Girl try to write the column, something that she's still not really, like, great at doing. She's also texting people in her life. She has a conversation with Omen. Just two besties hanging out. It's kind of chill. It takes her a long time to figure out how she wants to write the article. And that's kind of cool. She's also talking about, like, you know, I, I feel like I kind of want to tell, like, my story, but I don't really know how you would tell that story. And she's thinking about it, like, 
Did I do all that just to be here to write about tech? It's very interesting and I'm kind of trapped and it's kind of weird. Then she gets a message from Axel because Axel has her number now. And she's like, oh, right, I, I, I should probably figure out what this is. So she actually calls him and he's off doing like a secret spy mission, like stealing technology from a place somewhere. And she's like, look, you're not going to tell me who you work for. I think I know who you work for. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to do it. I don't like the idea of like using the technologies I'm, you know, investigating and working with being in the hands of people I don't fully trust. So I'm just here to tell you. I'm flattered you want to like use my skills for your company. I'm not interested in doing that. And she hangs up and leaves and she heads back home where she sees her roomie. Oh man, is just playing some video games and they chilling, but she's got to go pack because she's headed to the Fortress of Solitude very soon. And Owen's like, why can't you just tell me what you're doing? Like, I understand like you're scared, but come on, I, I, I care about you. I want to know like, what's up? Like, just tell me. She's like, I, I can't. It's kind of Superman-y stuff. And it's a very healthy relationship that these two have. It's really well written. It feels very earnest, and I, I think that's really cool. I, that's definitely like the like the Leah Williams stuff, where she just knows how to do that. Just make these two female characters feel authentic and have a genuine relationship that it is just it just has longevity to it. It feels like it's been there forever. It's pretty cool, and they have a cat together. And that's really fun, too. So, Paige is on her way to the Fort of Solitude. She heads there, runs into Kalex, and he's like, hey, let me show you around. Here's, like, a weird, like, jar if you need medical assistance. Here's the library. Here's, like, our zoo. And we have some animals that are in Sanctuary. They're, they're all creatures of Kryptonian origin. And she becomes really fond of a particular type of lion that appears to be dying because it's the last of its breed. It's like an old creature that's so angry and unhappy that it's just kind of, like, it's resentment towards life is keeping it alive and it's like an old troublemaker and she starts to bond with it and it's just growling at her and she's like, I kind of like this guy. What a freaky looking lion thing. It just looks so broken. I kind of respect it for that. But she's also got to start on the mission of figuring out like what is like this, you know, infection that's spreading from her potential Kryptonian heritage. So she's walking to some like the neighboring islands of Bermuda trying to figure out you know, who she can talk to about that. She goes to the coroner and she's like, all right, will you please tell me what's going on with the Kryptonian infection? And then she's trying to talk to this guy. That is when Amalak shows up and attacks and they get into a big fight, but he's looking a little bit like depowered and different, literally like shooting spikes out of his body. It's, it's not similar to Venom, but I think there's a comparison to make here where it's kind of like the symbiote adjacent, that kind of thing. Like the weird alien parasite that went inside him wants to kill kryptonians so i'm guessing this has a relation to like the infection that's spreading across the world she uses her laser vision and it kind of like blasts amalek back to seeing everything he tries to rip it out of his eye and he's like he's after you and he tosses it into the river and then he falls into the river essentially dying and it's like another death at the hands of power girl which is kind of a lot of stuff we're dealing with in this book that's kind of cool See, that's a lot of ideas in one. Okay, she's connecting with the old lion. She has a relationship with Lo. She's at the Daily Planet. She's got an assistant. The CIA wants her. Maybe the CIA. She's still got her roommate Omen and Streaky's there. And now we're doing like this thing with the Kryptonian infection. There's a lot of things being thrown in this book. And some of them work. Some of them don't. Overall, this is a pretty decent attempt. Like, if you were giving me the reins of Power Girl, I don't know what I'd do. So I can't be mad at it for doing this thing, you know? I just don't know if, like, this specific story is hitting me the way I want it to. Which is fine. There is still so much potential here. I have no doubt we are eventually going to hit those high marks for this book. And if not, that's okay. The fact that we're even doing this in 2023 says a lot about the current state of the DC Universe. And I appreciate it for that alone. So, Power Girl issue number two... I'm going to give a 7 out of 10. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.